Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Hello, folks. Welcome back to About the House. We really appreciate you joining us here today, and we are getting ready to have a fabulous show, one that, well, it's actually Deck Awareness Month. That month of May is Deck Awareness, but, you know, Deck Awareness should be any time of the year, but at this time of the year, we kind of like to focus and concentrate. Why? Well, we got uh, the holidays coming up. You got barbecues happening. You got the family coming over. You got uh, wrestling around and uh, on the deck with the grandkids, you know, so... Uh, this is why we want to make sure that we actually got our decks uh, secure and safe and ready to go. We kind of don't always think about uh, our decks are deteriorating or deterioration of them or falling apart. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of these things out of sight, out of mind. But just like uh, you change your batteries and your smoke alarms twice a year, you need to have okay, take a look at your deck. Hey, walk around to take a look at it. And so what we've done here is I've put a list of all kinds of different things to be looking for, but a real quick history of decks and such. Let me share with this first. What is the difference between a porch and a deck? I think that that is an absolute great question, and one that I get asked a lot because it does seem like they kind of are the same, and sometimes they really are kind of the same. But let me kind of talk about a little bit what is a porch. A porch actually is, you know, they've been around, for porches have been around on homes forever. Uh, well, maybe not forever, but in America for the last couple hundred years. Uh, and a lot of our smaller communities, as they continue to grow into homes, into subdivisions or into communities, uh, people love their front porch. That was a place that people could literally come by, walk down the street, talk to your neighbors and visit, sit, and, you know, and sit in a rocking chair and then have a, 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 an adult beverage or some sweet tea or something, lemonade. Uh, so, but, so a porch actually is a continuation of your home and it really does look like the rest of your home. Normally all porches are, look just like the rest of your home. Let me show you here, let's take a look at this picture here. And so here you go, here's what a porch look kind of looks like. See how it's all part, it's just an extension of the home. Uh, whereas a deck, which, you know, these both are very beautiful, a deck actually is an extension of the home, but it is not really a part of the home. And uh, so, and they have different purposes. For instance, on a deck, you barbecue and things like this, but on a porch, I don't think it's a very good idea to be doing a whole lot of barbecuing, you know, really. Uh, but they're not even made for that. That's not what they're for. And actually, we don't really have but really small porches in the back of the house. Back in my day and before my day, we had summertime porches. Uh, what that meant was is actually during the heat of the summer, the family would all go out on a screened-in porch at the back of the house and sleep. Uh, then, but they was mostly screened in because of the mosquitoes or bugs and whatnot. Uh, but really them, we don't see much of that anymore. Well, now that we have air conditioning, thank goodness. Uh, but on decks, decks actually come around around, um, around early 20th century. And for, they was kind of a prestige kind of emblem. If you had a deck, everybody kind of had a porch. But if you had a deck, the decks actually were something to show, uh, show you that you are got good money. You got extra money to spend. And it's a place like a, an extension of a playground. Uh, and actually, a lot of times we do see them like that, like a playground for the children to play on. Uh, during, especially when it's snowy or wet outside. Uh, I've even seen on decks, which we built specifically to lake up for a glorified uh, area for the children to go play. Uh, not babies necessarily, but that is why we talk about, which we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, everything, a lot of these things I'm going to be talking about is what we're looking for for decks to be where we're out and safety issues. We're not really going to go into codes or anything with that today or, because what you might have built before would not be code today, but it would be grandfathered in. I have been in the construction business for almost now, almost 50 years. <laughs> I hate saying that because it makes me feel really, really old. But we just love building decks, and but we've built them for many types of applications. And 
what we built, like that's for, for play, play, you know, for the little children to play, or for a place for the doggies to go play, uh, you know, out there on the porch so they wouldn't have to necessarily run off, uh, and they wouldn't be able to get down and get away. And that's, uh, but because we built them that away to then, they're not to code today. Not that we did anything wrong, not that anybody did anything wrong. It's just that that's how we learned how to do it. And ev the evolution of decking is still continuing. And let's, for instance, you know, we, we get, then we'll get on to the safe, the decks and the porches and such are, and the safety issues. But decks actually, so we've, we've had some, in our evolution of growing and, and, and learning how to put decks together, We've had some really, really bad disasters. We've had decks fall off homes. We've had decks collapse. Uh, I think that it was everybody in the United States of America and Canada will probably remember when in St. Louis, well actually it was Wentzville, Missouri, when we had the Grateful Dead concert and everybody got up on the deck and it collapsed and several people were killed. Well, codes really got strict about that time, and so did stuff like Deck Awareness Month. So that's why we want to make sure that we are in good shape. And here we go. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do because this is, this is some really great information. All right, here we go, here we go. The history of decks, I kind of just went through that, but this is a good looking deck. See how that is, and people, I mean, we live out there on our decks. Uh, uh, people put hot tubs out there, uh, and you, you can do any, we don't really put hot tubs on porches, uh, but you can, but most of the time we don't. Um, so what are we gonna look at? Well, let's start, I'm a simple guy. I believe, and as a building engineer, I always look from the ground up can't help myself. Because if you don't have a good structure, you don't have a good support base, you don't have anything. It all builds from the ground up. So let's look at piers. Now, concrete, this is, a con this is your concrete pier here. Now, different municipalities, different parts of the country, they'll have different codes. But on the most part, they're pretty much all the same. Now, this has been, this is a grandfathered in, okay? So we're not picking this one apart so much as just trying to use it as an illustration. But if you see here, the height of my pier should be six to eight inches above grade. Uh, and that also kind of depends. Now, if we get up further north, then we want this pier to be up to 12 inches high or a little bit higher. Uh, whatever the, you know, say for if you're in a really a snowy mountain area where the snows get taller, then you'll want your peering up. Why? Because this is exactly what it is. If we have snow sitting on the ground, or if I'm in a water zone, you know, like I have a home on the Mississippi River, uh, and sometimes when that water gets up, I have to have my peers up high so my wood won't rot. And treated wood does rot. Yes, it does. And uh, I will talk about that when we get a little bit further. Now, on our period here, you see some of this, what's happening here with this one here, we'll, uh, you get supports. They're supposed to support my bracing and my pier post here. And you can see this one here, this, po this pier got put in before he dropped the post. And so it's a little off center. Technically, in this particular application, the majority, uh, this application of this deck, it only need to be a four by four post. They put six by six. So we're, it pretty much is still perfect here. But also the load bearing on this here, it's being pretty much picked up by the pier. Uh, so I don't think I'd worry about it being exact, but you want it to look good, right? I mean, so if you're building one, you want it to look good. But if it's look like that, don't worry about tearing your deck down or having to replace that. Uh, and actually, to believe it or not, I do a lot of inspections for uh, deck safety. People just kind of go out and look at it as a safety of it, the engineering of it, or upgrading of it, or if they want to, uh, they're going to try to worry about code inspections or something. But, uh, but you do want to have this secured to the post, to the, to the pier. However, now we have different applications. You know, we got post anchors. Sometimes we got a concrete rebarb that comes up from the center here up into our post. You know, so anything like that works uh, if it's code compliant. Uh, now, how would you know if this is any good or not if your safety, if you could move this, then that means that that's already rotted. Here, let's move on down here and we'll kind of talk about some of the support posts because now we're moving up to the support post. Now look at this one right here, it's sitting on, a, it is literally, it's sitting right here on the pier, right? But 
they boxed this around. They tried to make it look nice. It started rotting. It's deteriorating. Uh, they, you know, so this is something. If you can move this box around here, then you know you got a problem. But look over here on this one here, and this is what happens more often than not is this concrete pier is, is posted sitting right here on this support pad. Now, I, and, it's, and what's happened is, is concrete is porous. Concrete is nothing but a big sponge. And so it'll literally absorb the moisture from, uh, from the ground up and from the water down. And of course it holds, as a sponge holds water, it is the same thing. And of course, when you put wood uh, touching concrete, this is absolutely a place that you're gonna get deterioration. Now, if you got a cedar post, which everybody loves our beautiful cedar post, and I love them too, you wanna to make sure uh, that uh, you don't actually have it sitting, I, at least I prefer, you don't have your, con your pier post sitting right on your concrete pier and have a, uh, one of the anchor blocks to kind of hold it up. But, uh, but if it's not that way, what you're looking for today is only for safety and for your family's concern. But if you see it moving, you see it rotted or anything like this, then you know you got a problem. Uh, so you wanna make sure you take care of that. And there's lots of ways of doing that. So here, hey, let's look at this. I'm gonna go back here and uh, talk about this here for a minute, folks. And let's see what we got here. Oh, now see, what we have here is the concrete pier and is literally ground level. And you can see it's starting to deteriorate. And this one, they did put the metal anchor or saddle on it and with this, and, but it's still, the moisture is all sitting around my post, my cedar post. Treated rots too. So don't let anybody tell you a treated post won't rot. All treated wood rots or deteriorates. Uh, it's, it, they say it's a lifetime warranty. Some of my material out there, it's not a lifetime warranty. Actually, there's no such thing as a lifetime warranty. Lifetime of what? Lifetime of it's gonna live there until it deteriorates? Or the lifetime of your lifetime? Or the lifetime till Jesus comes back? I don't know, but it, none of the case is happening. So it does no difference. Uh, but you got rusting wrapping right here. So that's another one you wanna look at, your anchor post to see if they're rusting out. Uh, and that's a, big, that's a big sign that you got a problem. Uh, then look and here, look here, look here. See, I literally, that's my thumb. That's my old thumb sticking right in there now. That's an old man thumb. I am not one of these all-star wrestlers where I could give you the thumb and I'm all strong like that. So, but look at that anchor post. It's right, that anchor right above that. So you see that metal is here and then it goes right up into here. And uh, I probably could have stuck my thumb even further through it, but if I damage it any more, then I'm gonna have to pay for it. But look at that. That's a great way of doing it. Finger test it, push your finger into it, see it. You know, actually, if, if that makes you kind of query or a little bit, you feel a little bit bad about, you know, odd about sticking your finger and not knowing what's in there, take your pocket knife or a pick, ice pick or something, and see how easy it slides in and out. And if you've got a jab, if you got it, if you just push it in and out with ease, you know, then then that, that, that you get a bad problem. If it's like what's his uh, Merlin swords, you know, for uh, the Round Table that uh, that they well, Robin Hood or whatever had. Well, that's a different story. But in this case here, that's not the private case. Uh, that's bad. That that that's really bad. All right. Support post to the beams. Wow, well, we're going to move on up because. That look at this now. We got our support post connection to our support beams. Look at my picture here. These are jobs I looked at. These are jobs. What do you think that's holding up there, folks? That right there. I mean, it's a beautiful picture, but of what? I don't know. Kindling? And that's treated wood. That is absolutely treated wood. And now look over here on this one. I wanted to show where this connection's here. See that connection right here to here? My post, now this is, this is a floor joist, but whether that be a beam or a floor joist, it's all the same application. These, we should be up high, up a six to eight inches up high. Now, even though there's probably not much snow gonna get up underneath there, that's still, you wanna keep the consistency and you wanna keep it above the ground level as much as possible. And uh, then you wanna have a connection from here, from your joist uh, to your pier. And this way you don't get shaken. You know, how many times have we all been on a deck? And, and I test them like this, and especially when I was a bigger fella, heavy, and I, fatter, okay, we'll just, just fat shame me. And, <laughs> and but when I would just literally, I try to shake my body to get that deck to move, because I don't want a deck moving. If one man can make that deck move, 
what do you think's going to happen when I got a whole bunch of young kids out there wrestling around having fun? Uh, they're, they're, they, I mean, they're going to get that thing wobbling back and forth. Oh, we don't. That's scary. So that's why you want it all tied together. Same thing in your home, but this is for decks. The same application. You, know, you want to make sure that that's all connected together. You make sure your wood's not rotted away, and uh, you'll you'll see it. It's pretty obvious if it's bad. So let's move on down here just a little bit uh, to the floor joist to the band board. Now, what is the band board? The band board is two different band. We got band boards. It is the perimeter board, whether it be the one attached to the house or the ones going on the sides or the one on the front of the of your deck. That's called your band board. Uh, and but on the house side, what we want to see is we want to make sure that we got our bolts. Look at my bolts here. Now these bolts are starting to rust. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But you want to make sure that that's so, when I'm seeing rusting, that means I'm starting to lose some of my structural integrity. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty important stuff. Uh, and then you come over here to look at this picture here. And what I'm showing here is now with a new code, when the band board is up against the house, we like to see some metal flashing where it literally flashes that water coming down from the outside of your house, down underneath your deck and outside of your band board. Now this is all treated wood here. Uh, which I, I think you should always get treated wood for the substructure, your joist, your band board. Okay, and, and if you don't like that look, then a lot of us times what we'll do is we'll put a, uh, a trim board or a, a pretty fascia board around it. And, uh, and even when we're doing composite materials, we're still using wood substructure, the structure of the unit, the support structure will still be uh, wood. So. We're still not to that part yet where we could use some composite materials. We could have actually on our post, there are some composite, great materials, but they're rather expensive. And unless you have a theme to your particular deck, you know, you're trying to achieve, most people never do it. But what I want you to look at right there is making sure that it's flashing. You don't see any kind of deterioration or anything. Uh, and of course, these are my hangers and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So let's go on down here. Let's look at a little bit more of this floor joist to the fa floor, floor joist to the fasteners. All right. So let's talk about that a little bit. Here's one of my joist hangers and or joist uh, right here. See how it's deteriorating and rotting. The same word right here. And uh, you know you're not going to be able. That's my stair stringer here, and my. But you're not going to be able to really hang anything up on here. Now new codes say that they say that on stairs you'd like to see a metal strap. I think it's a great idea. I really do, a uh, case of a fire uh, running from my joist, bottom of my, that's my str stringer here, and run that up on my band board. Uh, now on, on new construction, we have anti-sway bars that are being installed, you know, so you don't get help stop on that wobbling. Uh, but uh, if you're looking at your deck because you think it's probably getting wore out or showing age, you probably don't have that. But it is an absolute wonderful uh, thing to do if you're starting to get a little swaying on your deck, you can do that at any time. It doesn't have to be done only with a brand new deck. It can be retrofitted. So you wanna make sure you take care of that with, and see how that's working, but you can do that extra. Now look here, now what I got here is this is a, my support post to my handrail, right? And then I got, this is my band board coming around here. They got it doubled and you see how it's all rotted. I mean, it's just literally deteriorated. Well, what do you think that's going to hold? You know, that won't even hold a nail. As a matter of fact, that's so bad, I don't even think a termite would want that. Uh, and termites love, and, and, and carpenter bees love cedar. They're not so big into the treated wood. Uh, because We'll talk about that in just a minute, too. But uh, you want to make sure that if that's deteriorated like that, now outside mold, and this does have some mold happening. So anybody hits in the comments and say, what about the mold? Yeah, but outside mold, well, for us in the Midwest and in the Southern states, we all live with the mold on the outside. That's part of life. Um, more of you folks in the drier area, if you see mold like that, then you got another problem happening that you need to look at uh, to make sure. But now I wanna back up here real quick to another one here, and then we'll come back here. I wanna go back to my bolts here. Now you see these bolts that we got, these bolts that actually go in from my inside band board and it go all the way into the house and it ties my house and my deck together. And that's the connection that we make right there. Now, their bolts do rust out, 
But what we did have in the early 2000s is we had a change of material in our, our, our how we actually made our treated wood. And we, because the old treated wood was treated with arsenic, uh, so they kind of got away from that to this new, because this is what the government always does. When the government comes to tell you they're coming to help, watch out. Well, that's what happened here. You know, yeah, arsenic's bad, but this new material is even more hazardous. It's so hazardous that for the first couple of years, people were actually putting in the same bolts like this here into our, right into our band board, right into our home. But that material was so caustic, it literally ate the bolts away. I'm not kidding you. It literally ate the bolts. And people didn't even realize it. And then the decks were falling. So now we put it, now then they, then they went to a double dipped galvanized material uh, bolts. And now, but now we, all the materials that you got are pretty much made for the new treated wood. But if you got an older deck, this is something that's very, very important. And uh, you don't know who put what in. And if somebody, maybe they patched it. And maybe when they patched it, they put in the wrong bolts. So be looking for that rusting. That's a dead giveaway for problems. All right, so let's move on down here a little bit more. Let's get them back. But that was really important for you to know that. All right, let's come on here. Let's do this here. All right, now, I wanted to show you here. Now, here's a joist hanger. And... Uh, now look how, how this is all deteriorated away. For one, this joist hanger was not designed for this joist. See, that's too short. This joist hanger was designed for another size of joist hanger or joist. Uh, and we see this all the time. What happens is, and it's not code compliant, but you know, back in so many people, decks are a do-it-yourselfer project. And so we have a lot of people building them and they don't get permits. Uh, I'm not one way or another, that's your business, but if you're going to do it, is, I don't know if I'm as concerned about you getting a permit as I'm concerned about you doing it as safe as possible, uh, for not for just for you, but for the longevity. Uh, but So you want to make sure you get the right post or the right hangers for that. And now look here, uh, this whole galvanized post is starting to deteriorate. Uh, I got some better pictures of that. But look at that. I mean, this is this hanger needs this hanger needs replaced. This board here needs to be corrected. You're going to have to do some work to that. It is no longer safe. But we're going to get into some better ones. Here we go. Look at this. Uh, now these are some old-fashioned joist hangers. And look at cedar. Now all in all, this one hung in here pretty pretty good for them cedar uh, being cedar joist. But now look, my hangers are getting rusted away. Now of course at the base. Well, that's kind of where my pressure's at. And uh, that's not a very good thing happening here. Look at this one, it's even worse. Actually, this was so bad that this deck was not safe to be on. And then you can see the gap, my band board to my foundation, see that? Well, that gap right there, now I don't mind the gap. That's probably good. Let the air, let the water, any water get in through there, get out of it. Uh, but, you know, it's just another one of our problems to be looking at. Now, I wanna move on to the next, oh, look at this nail here because I want to talk about these a little bit more. See how that nail is right here? All right, we'll talk about that. Now, see my nails, this is the, the, same, the same decking here, but the same, and same type hangers. But now see, I got these rusted old nails. How come? Is it because of the wrong material? Or did I use double dip nails? Well, what happened is, is we have joist hanger nails. We have specific nails designed for this, and it's no kidding, if you don't use the right ones, and folks, I have to say, I'm embarrassingly gonna sit here and say I did not know any better back in 1970. Uh, I don't even know we had joist hanger nails back then. We just used roofing nails a lot of times, and, but if a guy had a few extra 16 sinkers in his tool bag, and he run out of the roof and nails, he would just throw them in there. Well, then they would rust away. We didn't know that at the time. We didn't know it'd be like this. Then they rust away. Then you have no support. So if you got rusted nails, make sure that you replace them. If your hangers are good, okay, fine. But if not, they got to go. You got to do something. See, and now look here, there's another picture right here. Now this is the proper joist hanger, but what I wanted to share with you here is, of course, I treated wood here, and I got my bolts just totally rusted out. <laughs> really, look at that. Now my hanger's not, and my, my bolt is. What does that tell you? Well, probably I got the wrong bolts in there. It's probably what that's telling me. Uh, because I, this is, they're both supposed to be galvanized, should be rusting at the same kind of uh, time, uh, but it's not. 
you got the right nails, see that? They got the right nails, they got the right hanger, but even at that, we're starting to get rusty out at the base of them. And uh, that's just creating, that's creating some more problems right there. Uh, so be watching for that, folks. And let's do decking. All right, now this and the handrail, though they're the, they, they deteriorate the quickest uh, because they're the most exposed to the elements. Uh, handrails, both of them are very, very, very important, uh, but, uh, you know, decking is easy to fix, easy to replace, uh, and, and easy to see if it's deteriorated. But what I wanted to share with you is how some of these do-it-yourselfers do. Now, I'm not saying there's anything technically wrong with this, other than this right here to these two two-by-fours. I guess he just didn't quite grasp that they are not going to fit in here right, so that's why he had to notch this. Hey, you got you to admit, there's some great Yankee ingenuity. And when I do construction fails, I'm going to probably use this, you know, stupid contractor awards, because this is funny stuff. But anyway, I hope this ain't your deck when you review this. <laughs> <laughs> don't remember me, but uh, you, so whoever out there probably will someday. But this, this, is a, this is a problem here as far as aesthetics, but it's not a problem as far as, uh, as you know, structural integrity. This is a problem. You see it's rotten in a way here, so that's an issue. Let's move on down here. Let's look at some more of these different decking issues. Now, right here are end grains. Always the end grains will seem to be deteriorate more quickly than the top of it. And we've talked about that in other shows. And hey, check us out, you know, on our other podcasting. You'll see we talk about these things. Uh, so I won't just keep reiterating. But look here. I mean, that's so bad. I'm, put, I'm not like I say, I ain't Superman. Uh, so I, I can't got that one finger push. Or Bruce Lee, uh, he had that one finger push punch, you know. I don't have that. Uh, and I still was able to push that up there like that. Well, what do you think? You think that's pretty much gone? That's a good way. So go to the ends. Look at the ends. Take Check it out. See where you're at. Uh, now, you know, they've even sealed them the best they could, uh, and they still are deteriorating. Oh, here you go. Look at this. Now, this is treated wood, and see how deteriorated and rotten it is. Now, you see our, my nails, we'll go start with this, these nails here. For one, these nails did not get, very, you can see over here, they rarely got countersunk, or did not get countersunk at all. This, a lot of times we use screws. People say, well, we put screws on our deck. Beware, screws back out too for two reasons. Number one, our material, it literally will dry out. When it dries out, it shrinks, number one. Number two, uh, that what happens to that material are, are, is walking back and forth and the shaking of the decks and the material will actually literally walk that screw and our nail right to the top. Now, screws are best. I'm not going to, there is no doubt about that. Uh, but nails work too. So if you don't have, a, if you got to fix it real quick, you can always punch a nail into it. Just make sure you countersink it. Uh, make sure that it's taken care of now. I also wanted to share with you here, uh, you know, it, with the spacing. So back in the old days, we used to space these uh, and put a carpenter pencil in between each board. We didn't really think about that. Now, my old business partner, which I, I'm going to throw his name out here, a great guy, Jack Riley, uh, taught me tons about construction. But he's the one who brought it first to me is when we, when we started working together is that we did not put that carpenter pencil in between. The, we would butt our wood up tight. And so it looked, it, that took, it, it cost us a few more dollars but it, because we used a few more pieces of wood, but it made for a higher quality product. Why? Because when it did shrink, now, look at the spacing here. That's so wide that if a lady was to come out there and high heel shoes or anything like this, she's going to break her ankle, break, or break a leg, uh, trip and fall at, at best. Or that's so bad that little children could get their toes stubbed in there. I've seen them so wide like this one here. Little doggies can get their feet stuck in between them and break their little legs. Um, and so these are all issues that you need to attend to. So t this, that's that wide. That's another problem. But at least you know it. And at, and at best, just tell people you can't come out on my deck with, you know, high heels or something. Uh, or just beware of it. And then when you do replace your decking boards, start buttoning them up tight. Because, yes, they will shrink. And they shrink if you make them tight. They shrink perfectly, and they just got just enough distance between them so the moisture 
will drip between them. The snow will leak between it, so you won't be having standing snow when it melts. So it you can it definitely works, but that's a problem, and uh, that's uh, that's a safety concern. And when I get hired to do trip and fall inspections, uh, so because we do construction litigation, expert witnessing, uh, and construction fails, uh, then that's a problem, and you could be liable. I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to say you are. But I will say a good, a sharp attorney is liable to get you on that one. So beware. All right, let's move on down here. Now, now this is the edge of my deck right here. See And you can see the screw right here. He put a screw in here. And that's so rotted that it won't even hold the screw, that band board. And this is going down a set of steps. But you can see right there, look at that. Now you can see my deterioration. This is Anything like that's telling you, you've got some repair work to do. Your deck is moving into a level of being unsafe. Uh, and, of course, the more you let that water and snow drip down in between that, the worse it gets. Uh, but, look, I mean, I, that's a perfect example of where the screw did not hold. Now, see where they shot these nails. These, uh, we're going back to the nails real quick. See how these nails are right here? These are countersunk, so they did not come back up. But, you know, they still can sometime. So anytime when you're walking across the deck, do this, do this at every spring. Walk across your deck see, and, and make sure that every single nail is countersunk or screws are countersunk. Why? Because if they get up a little bit high, like we like, well, like this one right here, you get up a little bit high and you walk across this with your bare feet, it's going to rip your feet wide open. And that's, that, and that's gross. I mean, you got, it's that, you know, tetanus shots. I mean, we don't need that. So make sure them nails are all set. That's a wonderful safety tip. As a matter of fact, I need to put that on one of my, on our blog. You need to check out our blogs. You can find it, our blogging on our webpage at uh, Troy, uh, GallowayBuildingServices.com, www.GallowayBuildingServices.com, and check our blog out uh, in, in, in our web, our, our newsletters and such. And, and actually, if you like that kind of stuff, hit like and subscribe. We don't really bug you too much, but we do send enough good information out there that could save you a ton of uh, grief. All right, so let's move on down here. Now, I'm underneath my deck. And look here, I mean, all this looks really good. You know, I got my, my hangers look good. You got my bolts are looking good. You know, I'm getting a little bit of mold growing up on here. That's all fine. But, you know, you see right in here what I'm showing here. Now, the side of this is mold that you're seeing. But what I wanted to show you right here is what we call bark wood. And that's where the closest to the edge of the tree. And so it's not like the heart of the wood. It's not the highest quality. That's a sure place right there that you want to be looking for deterioration because that's where it's going to deteriorate first. Uh, and so that's a really, that's a great little leading indicator. Why wait until you have a problem? You know, uh, because nobody wants to get hurt. Besides, heck, we want to spend our time, you know, uh, entertaining, barbecuing, not working on this thing once and, and then we're done. So that, look for that. Look for the bark wood. A lot of guys don't even know that. Actually, I wish you wouldn't even have put that down there. You should have just called that material, but, you know, it's not how it works in this real world anymore. We just throw whatever crap we can up and, and hope for the best. All right, so let's move right here to handrails now. Isn't that a beautiful handrail? It absolutely is. That's a, uh, that, uh, and so, but my problem with this is it's grandfathered in, so I don't have a problem and uh, nothing like that. But see how the spacing is between my spacing. Used to be six inches between post or between our pickets, but we kind of got away from that because it had to be little children could stick their heads through that. I know, I know. Us old timers were thinking, you mean to tell me I got to build a deck because my children, I've never taught my children how to behave? Well, that to a certain point is true. Not, what do you say? But on the other hand, we all know how fast kids move, and they move really fat faster than us parents do, and who knows? So it's a great idea to make sure that every four inches, that's code compliant, but that's also small enough that a child can't stick his head through, or a puppy dog or something like that. I got a little puppy that could go right through that six-inch handrail and fall off the edge of the deck. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want that. So in this case here, I just recommended that they do something to kind of, but it's so pretty of a deck, you know, and, and with this one here, honestly, by code, it does not even need a handrail. So uh, whatever they put up, which is fine, uh, anything's better. And if a kid did fall off of your puppy, it wasn't going to hurt him too much. Yeah, and hopefully they'll only do it once. So 
and we're going to now look at this. Now, well, let's do this here. Let's do this here. Let's back up. See how my pickets, they run down here and they tie to my band board. And this is really a quick, quite common way of doing it. And it's a fabulous way and it really makes it stout. Uh, but this is a more of a purdy way. And you see, this is what happens. And my, uh, my pickets come down here and then they sit right here on my shoe plate and they just totally rot away. And you just literally can't do much about that. I mean, you could keep it painted. It's uh, just that anytime snow sits on anything like that, it just deteriorates that much more quickly. And you're going to pay more money for it being done this way. And it's pretty, but, it, you know, it's, you're going to pay more money. Uh, now, you want to have four, you can have no more than four inches from the bottom plate to the bottom of your de top of your deck. There again, four inch clearance, so you animals and such. Uh, and if you don't, I'd highly recommend that you put a little, you know, something around it to make sure nobody gets hurt. But yeah, that, that happens all the time. Do you think that's safe? Uh, we, well, stupid question. We know better. Oh, hey, let's move on down here. Let's look at this next one here. This is a good one here. All right. Now, nice little extension cord, but that's pretty much irrelevant to the story here. And what I'm talking about, how we're attaching my post to my house. Now, there's a lot of ways of doing it, and I'm not going to say what's right and what's wrong, but I will say what, what is incorrect is that when I put, go, I put a bolt or anything from my post into my house or through my vinyl siding, you want to make sure that vinyl so hole's got a, a hole in that vinyl siding is big enough so it can allow it to move and not crack or cause siding issues. Uh, but, it, you know, hopefully you get this good and tight. Most of the time, we don't even attach it to the house. But sometimes we do. Uh, sometimes we have other ways we can secure it. But as long as it's nice and tight, you do not want that wobbling back and forth. You might lose your extension cord. <laughs> anyway, that was mean. You know, let's move on down. And, oh, here we go. Here's a beautiful treated handrail. Now, can you imagine? For one, you couldn't even put your can of what, adult beverage up here without it falling off. Look at it. It's so warped up. But see how my nails are coming up? It's just because it's old and, and, and drying out. You see it's how bad it's cracking. All that needs replaced. That is absolutely not safe. You would run your hand across these nails. You're going to tear your hand wide open. Uh, you just get after all the. There is no patching this one. This one's a, this one's a goner. So you want to make sure as you see that, just know that it's no longer safe. So let's look at this one right here real quick, and let's talk about the top of my post. Now this is the top of my cedar post. Uh, which also treated does the same thing, but not to the degree that, as this. Uh, but what happens is, and they've been sealing it, sealing it, sealing it. There's just nothing in the world you're going to do about it. Now, structurally, that's not going to fall, make you fall. You're not going to get hurt. It's not in that. But it's, aesthetically, it looks horrible. And they've done their best to try to, you know, to paint this over top of it and make it look better. But they do sell metal caps, copper metal caps, aluminum caps you can put over top of it, and that's how I'd recommend so for aesthetics. But if you see that, that is not a safety issue in my book, uh, it's just an aesthetics issue. Let's move on over here off the same handrail. Now, uh, you see how my post is. This is my top cap running right into this, and we're just, these are shrunk, or this is because this is loose, and this is loose, and they're moving, they're both moving different direct rates. And now, look, I got this separation. These nails are not technically strong enough to hold. So if you're a good, you know, you're a couple of teenage lads out there and you uh, bounce off that, you could literally find your, find your butt on the ground. Uh, hopefully your ground's not far from the top of your deck. Well, if you do, but this is a problem. And so but look at that. And we could talk about it. And there's, you're just going to have to secure it. I don't care. There's tons of ways of doing it. And it's an aftermarket. And it's yours. So you do it to however you feel best. Just make sure that it is strong and that you feel like you could bounce against it. Now, here we go. I wanted to show you this picture because now I showed you this picture of this, this painting type of material they put on decks. And if you, after a while, this is what it looks like. Uh, no, this is a, now, this is still not structurally a problem, but it is aesthetically pretty unsightly. Uh, you want to make sure that, you know, if you're going to, once you seal it, once you paint it, you married that. You married it forever. Uh, if you put a clear sealant on it or something like that, you know, or, or, or even a pigmented sealant on it, that will not cause you that kind of grief. But once you paint it and you put this here type of material on it, it's definitely going to, you married it for eternity. You're never going to get away from having to keep painting it. 
So think about that when you do it. All right, well, we are coming close to the end of this, but I do want to share with you some uh, stairs. Let's talk about stairs. All right, so, so stairs in my world, I love building stairs. And I think stairs is like the beauty mark of the whole deck. You know, they can really make a deck look gorgeous. But they also, per square foot, are the most expensive part of the deck. So it's important. And also, that's where you're probably going to lose your balance or fall off it, or you're hauling refrigerators up it or anything heavy up there. Or who, who knows? But the stairs are extremely important to make sure that not only are they aesthetically beautiful, but they're structurally sound. Now, this is what I'm seeing right here. Now, see how this is sitting? Now, a lot of municipalities, this is my stringer right here, and they just got it sitting on a concrete pad right here. I, I don't, that, that's not a problem to me. I understand some municipalities, it absolutely is. And they were the, what, a concrete pad. Oh, I don't know if you could see that or not, but I like a little landing at the bottom of your stairs, concrete landing. And then your stairs would sit on that concrete landing. But this is acceptable. And, uh, uh, Oh, I want, let's look over here real quick. I'm going to bounce here just for a second. See, we was talking about our concrete pier, our support post, and our brackets. See how that little cavity is right here, that little airspace? By having that little airspace is allowing this board not to rot. Remember, we was on support post and how they were rotting. And uh, see, that's what I kind of, I really like that uh, type of, uh, Simpsons uh, sells that, Tico, uh, di different brands out there that sell that, but anything that allows your air to cycle, or circulate around that. But anyway, back to the stairs. So let's see how they, and I like how they've cut this corner off here. That looks really good. <laughs> so that's kind of, you know, not uh, do it yourself, but still acceptable. But now look at this. Now oh, this is just right down funny. You know, my post has gotten so rotted and it's just coming down. I've had to temporary it up. And that's what they've actually done. They temporary it up because now they're getting ready to put a concrete pier underneath here. But if they would have done it like they were supposed to and actually have put the pad out here at the end of, at the bottom of that stair tread, you wouldn't have that problem. You can easily do that as retrofit. So if you've got that mud or something or you've got some sinkage at the bottom of your steps, lift them up a little bit, pour your concrete pad, three and a half inches, four inches. You're really not carrying a ton of weight, so it don't have to be. But if you could, like I recommended here, they put piers underneath it. That way you don't have any freezing thawing, you don't have your movement of your steps. Now that's, you know, but that's what you want to be looking for for that. And that pretty much is everything that we have here for today's show. But if you have any questions, so I get people that call me from all over around the world and mostly around the North American continent. And they've been watching my YouTube videos and our phone numbers on there. Uh, literally, my phone number's there for you to give me a call and ask any questions. And I always try to return the calls. I'm pretty good about making sure. But if you have a question, check out our webpage. Actually, and if you're going to hire a contractor, we're, uh, check out our new book, How to Hire a Contractor. Actually, with our new book, I guarantee you, you follow that, and, I, and you're not going to get ripped off. You're probably not ever going to get ripped off again. And if you're a contractor and you follow that book and you listen to that, you're going to set yourself way ahead of everybody else because it's going to show that you're an expert. But... If you're going to be your own general contractor and you got to hire people, it's fabulous also. So I highly recommend that you go to our webpage and check it out. Uh, Galloway Building Services, www.gallowaybuildingservices.com. And hit like and subscribe, and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, one more shout out. I hope you don't edit this to our fabulous producer, Joey. We love him. My wife and I think he's just an outstanding young man. And even my puppy dog loves him. So. He's that's the seal of approval right there. Thank you. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services. GallowayBuildingServices.com.